Welcome back to the game. This interconference matchup features the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the UAB Blazers. What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number four of our UAB Blazers Dynasty in MVP Baseball 2006 NCAA edition. We have Jay Balmer out here on the mound, and he's got some pretty good pitches that he's going to be able to toss against this Mississippi State Bulldogs team. They're an A overall, so we've got our work cut out for us. They are 1-7, and seven, though. We find ourselves at 3-7. And, seven. and, you know, hey, we, if we get a good performance out of Jay Balmer, I think, I think I like our chances here. Our pitching has been good. Our offense has been a little shaky. It's been kind of back and forth, back and forth. We're just still trying to figure it out. And uh, I, I, I think that we could have a good performance here if Jay Balmer keeps us in it. So you guys saw the defensive alignment there. We have Emil out in right field. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that last name. He's trolling me in the comment section. He thinks that, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce that last name. Keltson. Keltson. There you go. Thanks, brother. If you guys don't know, that's my brother in the NCAA football videos, which we'll be posting here in a couple hours. So, you guys saw Jay Balmer doing some good stuff. Getting us out of the first inning with no harm done. Mississippi State's team, like we talked about, is a very good one. Defensively, they're very solid. Pitching-wise, they're very solid as well. And we get an early ground ball here to third base. He's going to dive for it and make that nice, easy toss. But Tangan almost beat it out. Honestly, if there was a challenge system here back in 2006, I definitely would have challenged that call. I... I truly believe he was safe, and the umpire just missed it. But Dougie's going to get on for a base hit, a little looper that fell right in between right field and the line. Here's Josh Austin, the third baseman, and he's going to go ahead and strike out, trying to hold back his swing. And, you know, it's a tough pitch, guys. You know, in MVP baseball, the ball gets on you quick. It really does, and those change-ups and those off-speeds, they, they just get there real slow. So it's more of an arcade type of game. And, you know, it's just something you got to get used to, especially when you're used to playing MLB The Show all the time. Everything's a little bit more realistic. You can predict it a little bit better. But we get runners on first and second base. Ground out here. Not going to get a run across. So still nothing, nothing. Let's go to the top of the second here. Holt makes an easy play. Ground ball to first base. Going up against this first baseman. 84 contact, 70 power numbers. So Balmer. He's going to miss here with a 92-mile-an-hour fastball high and up right down the middle. 1-0 count. Still with one down here. Fastball, 93. 93. So Jay Ballmer can bring it a little bit. He's got some heat going in that right arm. Let's see what he's going to be tossing here with a 1-1 one one count. He's going to go with a slider. It's going to find itself at the top of the zone. And that's a pretty good pitch. He threw, the, he threw him high fastball, then high fastball low. And then coming back with the slider, it's, it's a pretty tough one to handle, guys. You're not going to know exactly what's coming now. I guarantee you that. So we're going high and inside and a high and inside fastball. Uh-oh, not good. Tangan, get back there, baby. Get back there. How did he predict that? How did he guess that? He's going to launch this thing for a solo home run deep to center. And this first baseman, guys, is batting over 440 so far through eight games. Here is a flip by Kingston over to Garcia, back to Holt for a double play ball. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered, guys. So we are gonna get out of the top of the second. Let's go to the bottom second. And here's a long drive, way back. Kingston going deep and he makes the catch. The center fielder makes the catch at the wall. Oh, we cannot catch a break right now, guys. But we do get a base hit here back up the middle. So at least we got something going now. At least we got something going now. Here's Reggie Garcia going to ground out to second base. And he's going to make that flip over to first for the final out of the inning. So we've got three hits so far in the game. Mississippi State has three hits as well. But we have not been able to capitalize and score the runners that we've had on. We got unlucky there with the line drive to deep center with that center fielder making that catch just really i mean we're putting some good swings on the baseball here right now guys look at the left fielder out there gonna make that catch that was another deep shot there here's doug 73 contact against righties 74 power against righties as well so we're still looking to drive the baseball oh oh count and here's a deep shot way back 
<laughs> center field and back at the warning track. So again, again, we are stinging the baseball and we can't get any luck for it. It's just not, it's not cool, guys. It's not cool. But eventually, eventually, we got to break through, right? Uh, eventually that luck, that bad luck has got to run dry. 0-1 count here to Josh Austin. Now 0-2 after a swing and a miss. And, you know, the timing is there, but I don't think he can catch up to that. It's a little bit high. It's just a little bit high. So here is a fastball inside. Actually, excuse me, change up inside. And, you know, thinking that it's just going to hang inside. It didn't. It kept kept moving out more inside on his hands, and he's going to foul out. So, guys, we actually jump further a little bit, and we're going to get out here in this inning as well. So we're already in the bottom of the fourth now. And here's Kingston with a base hit up the middle. So at least we got something started here again. So again, guys, the offense is coming through. Offense is coming through. We're getting people on. We're getting hits in bunches. And here's Sam Morgan, the DH, looking at that gap shot. Uh-oh. Got to gotta know the controls here. Got to know the controls here. So we get runners now on second and third. That should have been a, an RBI. It's a shallow. Let's see if we can actually come through here. We do not. We do not. So we get a fly ball to left field, and that's also not going to get the job done. So, again, we're getting people on base. We're getting base hits. We're hitting with some power, but we're just not coming through in the clutch. That's really what it comes down to. So Holt's going to make this play, and Balmer still pitching extremely well here. Four hits and one run against him. And here's Doug again going deep, and this time it's... Again, the left fielder at the at the warning track going to make the catch. Balmer going to strike out the batter here high and inside fastball, so he's continuing to challenge Mississippi State, a team that's a lot better than their 1-7 record, I can tell you that. So I can tell you that much. So a line drive back to Holt. It's going to be the second out of the top of the sixth inning. And manager comes out to talk to Jay just in case, you know, we need to warm up our pitchers here because we – are noticing that Bomber is giving it everything he's got and the stamina is starting to get a little bit lower. You guys can see it at 43% right now. And with two down, you know, I trust that he's going to get this out. So Reggie Garcia is going to make this play nice and easy. And we are out of that inning. So Bomber through six, only allowed one run. So hopefully, guys, that the Blazers can come through here finally. Finally. We get a leadoff base hit. Here's a pitch going to be driven out to right center field into the gap, guys. And uh oh, again, still got to know the controls. Still got to know the controls. We got another second and third situation. Probably should have scored the run. That's two runs that we've left on the board because of my inability to understand the controls with the, with the base runners here. So we did get a ground ball. Second baseman makes a nice play, a little off balance, but we are not able to get the runs across. And now it's happening again, guys. It's happening again. But look at this. Sam Morgan coming up huge with a base hit into the gap. And, guys, no base running mistakes here. And Sam Morgan comes through, guys. Uh-oh. It gets away. It gets away from the third baseman. Now the catcher is trying to get it by the dugout. And Sam Morgan's going to round third head for home. They can't make the throw. So Sam Morgan stopped at second base. And the ball got away from him. They threw it around the diamond. And he's going to get an inside the park home run. So three runs are going to come in off of that RBI double, which turned into not being a double. It's an inside the park home run. And so, guys, we are continuing to hit in this inning. We now have runners on first and third. Here is Tangen coming up. And he's going to hit a ground ball back to first, who's diving. And Tangen, with that speed, cannot get there in time. So the inning does come to a close. But we did some major, major damage against Mississippi State here. So Bomber still out there. And he's got a circle changeup working for him here. 86 on the black. And the ump's going to make that call on the batter. Look easy for him right there. So Holt going to get that little chopper, but he can't make the tag. And the runner's going to run in safely to first base. So not lucky again for UAB. Home run is going to tie the game. This is a huge at-bat for Bomber, the Blazers, and Mississippi State in this 3-1 game. Top of the seventh, 0-1 count. Nice pitch by Bomber. Here's another 
Fastball. Gonna miss. I was gonna say it was gonna be a nice pitch. But just a little early release on that. One and one count. Bomber. Nice perfect release right there. Hyde. Gonna make that catch out left field. And we are gonna preserve the three to one lead. Guys, Hyde, Austin, and Holt coming up. That's your next three for the bottom of the seventh inning. And now, this is where you want to make your insurance runs. You want to create some insurance runs here, guys. So Hyde going to go to the right field corner, and he's going to take it into second base here with, an, with a leadoff double. So now we're back in business here to try to get this game to be 4-1. to one. Maybe if Josh Austin comes through, he can make it 5-1. to one. That'd be really nice. But he's going to lift the fly ball at the center field. Center fielder is going to make this catch here, and here is another line drive back to second base. So, yet again, we're hitting the ball. We're stinging it pretty good here, but, you know, just right at people. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the leadoff double will not result in a, another run score as we get a fly ball to left field. So now it's time to be putting in the relief pitcher, guys. We are going to go with... We're going to go with we're going to go with the lefty. And that is Lazaro Rodriguez, who has not pitched very well so far in this 2005 regular season. He is not he's not done well. I'm not sure if that's just the simulation not putting him in good situations or if he's the type of guy to come in when, you know, the offenses have been kind of overpowering, if he's just the guy that, you know, is just there to eat innings, that's usually the type of guy that um, you know, really struggles when you put him in bad situations. You know, he's just the guy that's going to just eat innings for you. And, you know, you're not really looking for a shutdown inning. But he gives us what we wanted to in this inning as he faced off against some pretty decent batters here. We trusted him and he came through. But here's a player, James Monroe, one of our better relief options, perhaps our best relief option. And he comes through and gets the one out against the right-handed batter. I did not want to mess around with that lefty-righty matchup, so James Monroe comes through, and Kelly Tangen comes up with runners on first and second, and look at this! He bounces it off of the plate. Watch this one more time. Wow, it just had enough hang time where the catcher could not throw him out at first base on that ground ball. Hyde, though, going to come up with bases juiced, and he's going to strike out. James Monroe still out there for the ninth. So it's a pretty pretty savvy play call in there by the manager. <clears throat> Yours truly. That we had him face off against one batter to end the eighth. And now he's going to face off against these three hitters here. The right fielder, number 26. He's only got three pitches so far in this inning. And Holt going to make this play as Monroe takes it to first, guys. And your UAB Blazers are going to win this game number one against an overpowered Mississippi State Bulldogs team. I mean, this, is, this team's an A rank. We're sitting here at a C minus, and we just busted out 13 hits on these guys, and our pitching was great. Jay Balmer was great. I tell you what, I tell you what, we're not looking bad. We're not looking too bad. A little inconsistent at times, but I think once we, if we can put it all together and make a nice little run here and make a nice little stretch run, we could be on to something special. So I like what we've been able to do in, well, the majority of our uploads and the games that we've shown. It's just mostly the sim games that we're really struggling, guys. So I think that that plays a factor in, in the overall ranking of our team, the overall ratings of our players. You know, maybe they're not being used properly. Maybe they're not used to being used properly. But, guys, we are going to actually go into game number two of the series. And I'm going to go ahead and put Keltson out there one more time in right field and we're going to go with David Tilly our ace our ace on the staff to close off this matchup here in this game number two if we can take the series and you don't want to split that would be a huge momentum boost for UAB here so here's Hyde coming up he's going to get a line drive back to second base he's been making a lot of plays like that all game long in the last game and we got shortstop here making a nice throw and we've got another play out to second base. Again, this guy's been everywhere so far in this series. Here's a little looper going out to left field, but he's going to make this catch as well. And guys, through two, we've still got no hits on the board here for either side. Tilly in a little bit of a jam here in the top of the third and a double. Going to go all the way to the wall. Tangan cannot corral it, and it's going to lead to two runs and a triple. 
that's a very deep alleyway out there in this UAB Blazers stadium and just take a look at this again so another another potential double here as Tangan finally gets to this one and he was thinking about going to third thinking about going to third but Garcia cuts it off nicely and we do get a strikeout here so Tilly kind of struggling a little bit right now I think he's just challenging a little bit too much and not trying to be deceptive against this Bulldogs team that's I, they really want this W that I think they took it personally the last game losing to a team like us so it's four to nothing right now at the top of the third it's not looking too good but Tilly finally settles down a little bit here as Josh Austin makes this play in fair territory a little pop-up on the third base side so two outs now nothing nothing count and another pop up this time over to the right side of things at first base foul line and Holt is going to make that play and catch the box score man the box score says it all four nothing on five hits and we get a strikeout not good and it was a bad pitch to swing at here so one down Tilly gets a strikeout and that's a good pitch Right there, high and inside. Just now he's challenging here. And now he's starting to mess with him a little bit. That curveball, he's throwing more off speeds in there versus trying to go for fastballs. So I like what I'm seeing out of Tilly right now and the way he's responding. And then look at this. So Hyde comes up, gets a real good pitch to hit, takes it the other way, which is exactly what you're supposed to do on that outside pitch. But the outfielder made a great play. I mean, he took a stab at it, and he made a great play. I mean, there's nothing you, you can't take that away from him. So Austin going to strike out again. He has a, he's had a problem with that so far in this season, at least in the early going. Another double here, going all the way to the wall. Tangan cuts it off, and the runner again was thinking about it, thinking about it, going to third with those wheels. Two down, one and two count here. Tilly, got to make a nice pitch here. I know you're getting tired, bud, but got to make a good one. So Kingston, back up the middle. That looked like it was going to get it get through for another RBI to make it 5 nothing, but Kingston makes the nice play here, and look at shortstop making the pivot throw right there, stop, start stop, throw across your body make that strong throw, and again guys, we can't buy a hit, we don't have a hit right now through 6 innings number 25 right here for the Bulldogs, throwing a no-no on us. Bottom seven, and Dougie's coming up, and uh-oh, here's a long drive. Way back, it's going to land in the warning track for the first hit for the Blazers, and now, do we have something going here? Do we have something going? Let's see what Josh Austin can do when, with his at-bat here. He's going to lift a long fly ball out to right center field, and it's going to drop. Right fielder can't get to it, and it's going to be an RBI double for Josh Austin. And that's a way to come through right there. That's what, exactly what we need. And Holt, the first baseman, is going to strike out here on a pretty good pitch. It wasn't a strike, though. It was a ball. And then this two-seam fastball here to Kjeltsen. He's going to strike out as well on the same type of pitch. Same type of pitch. Here's Kingston with a ground ball. Cannot get it over to Garcia in time for the double play opportunity. And now... We got Tilly who is running out of gas. He's running out of steam, guys. Just gets over Davis's head. He's losing that release point right now. And here's a fly ball deep to left field with the bases juiced. And Hyde makes this play. Tagging and going to home is the runner from third. And he will score. So it's going to be a 5-1 to one baseball game right now. And now it's time to make a change. It's time to make a change here. So Matthew Reno comes out. Kingston back to Garcia. Over to first. And they're going to call him safe. So runners on the corners now. And Reno is going to get that two-seam fastball high and inside for the strike three call. And so he works us out of the jam. Let's go to the top of the ninth. Reno still out there. Hyde makes this play. Out and left. Short stop. Coming up. One down, ground ball, pass Austin and the shortstop through that 5.5 hole, I like to call it, what Tony Gwynn used to call it, the 5.5, hence being shortstop is number six, and third base number five. Get it? Got it? Good. Two outs, runner on first base, Tangin, not going to get to this one. Going to gun it back to third, make sure nobody's going to get over there. And Reno is actually going to get a ground ball to Kingston, who thought about going to second for whatever reason, but he does go to first. And we are done in the ninth inning. So we've basically got one shot. We got one more shot to tie this game. We need four runs. 
Here's Tangan doing his best in order to make that happen. Here's a base hit to right field. Now we're in business here. Hyde coming up and a ground ball to short. Back to second. Over to first. And Hyde cannot beat it out. And Mississippi State gets game number two of the series. So we split the season series with these guys. And I think that that's, that's it. We're not going to be playing them again in this 2005 season. So here's the box score. Nobody really did anything. We had three hits the whole game. And the three hits came from the number one batter, the number two batter, and the number three batter. We could not get anything going in the middle part of the order. Guys, Tilly had four strikeouts, five earned, eight hits. He went seven in the third. Reno went an inning and two-thirds. And we missed out on our challenge by one strikeout. We needed ten. We got nine. So we are not going to be able to get the sponsorship or the gear sponsorship. That kind of sucks. Now you guys can see that we're starting to lose some games right now. So we're facing a little bit of adversity. We've also got players that are unhappy. Noah Thurston is questioning the coach on why he's not being able to pitch. What What's going on with that? What's up, coach? Got to get me in. I'm ready to play. So we've got some issues here at UAB right now, and I think a lot of the a lot of the angst is coming from the losses. I think if we were starting to win some games a little bit more, you know, people wouldn't be uh, you know throwing fits about playing time, and and people wouldn't be. Um, so on edge right now. By the way, did you guys see that guy's name? Fidel Kastner. Ah, see what I did there? I almost said Fidel Castro, but I didn't. Price Hotel, starting pitcher, left fielder, pretty good player here, 66 overall. This is the type of player that we want. As a freshman, he's going to only be able to grow. You guys saw that from the skill level. He's going to be growing throughout his time here at UAB. Robbie Weigel, the catcher. Looks like he's going to be pretty solid too, so... He's got some interest. We got some players that are interested in us, even though we're not having the best season that, you know, that I know that we're capable of having. I think we can turn it around, but we're gonna do. We're gonna need to do it in a hurry here, as we only got a couple more months left to go. And you know, we got some big matchups. Got some big matchups coming our way here for Conference USA play. You guys can see the statistical update. Take Gander. Take a look. I do want to get some more playing time for Mashfee, Clump. Some other guys in that lineup, they've only got three games, two games to this point. Kind of sucks for them. You know, yeah, I want to get some more guys involved because the one thing you don't want to have happen, it's a long season. You don't want all your guys to get tired out. So you do have to rely on your bench players. That's why they're there, right? We want to be able to have some guys get in and uh, give, give our starters some rest here so we're at the full force and the full potential of our team. You guys can see the pitching Updates too. Lazaro Rodriguez, 25 ERA through five and two thirds. Not good. Noah Thurston isn't. He hasn't been pitching because he was actually, for whatever reason, inactive. We got. We had 24 men on the roster that were active, and now we got 25. So I don't know how that happened, but he's going to be starting next game, and you guys will see him be taking on the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers. So this is going to be a pretty good matchup, I think. I'll show both games as well for the for that series. So I'll see you guys later on in the week. And again, if you want more UAB Blazers Dynasty, make sure you hit that like button. If we can get to 50, we hit that mark last time. That's why you guys are getting this extra upload. I, I really only want to upload this series once per week. But because you guys were awesome and super supportive, of it we surpassed that 50 that 50 likes threshold and i decided i was going to give you guys an extra one an extra upload so if you get we can get past 50 i'll get another upload uh this week as well so you guys will get two uploads huh you like it you like it well if you like it you love it you want more of it you know what you gotta do hit that like button or hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner if you have not done so already i'll see you guys in the next one as always go uab and peace